Listen, 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 man. You might think this is a reach. You might think this is a reach. But I got to tell you something. Joel Embiid, last night, at about 7 p.m., followed Keith Pompey on Twitter. What does that mean? Eastwood, what does that mean? Why would it matter if Joel Embiid followed Keith Pompey on Twitter? Now, we've known throughout the course of Joel Embiid's career, he likes to use Twitter. He puts out subtle tweets, sometimes trolling. Uh, sometimes he likes things to kind of send a subliminal message. Uh... He followed Keith Pompey on Twitter. And Keith Pompey is the Sixers beat reporter that's been putting out the James Harden reports. Yesterday, Keith Pompey put out the James Harden is expected to return to Houston report, saying that sources have said that a majority of NBA executives expect him to return to Houston. And then he put out the report on top of that, that said that uh, Houston's coaching search before they hired Ime Udoku involved questioning around coaching James Harden. So according to his sources, you know, he believes, they, they believe that uh, the Houston is expecting to coach James Harden again. Joel Embiid then goes and follows Keith Pompey after he put out those reports. That simply means that Joel Embiid is paying attention. Joel Embiid is watching. Joel Embiid is listening. Joel Embiid is waiting to see what happens with James Harden. I said this yesterday. I'm going to say it today. I'm probably going to say it every day for the, in, until it happens, until something happens. If James Harden leaves, Joel Embiid is going to request a trade. And I don't think you're winning with James Harden. Because I think he's cooked. But if James Harden leaves. I think Joel Embiid is going to request a trade. And I think that's why he followed Keith Pompey. And I, I think he was just trying to send a, a little message to everybody. Like look I'm paying attention. Look I'm paying attention. Look I'm watching what's going on. If James goes back to Houston, Joel Embiid is going to request a trade. I need you to know that. And then it'll be full on, it'll be full on blow it up season. It'll be full on blow it up season. It's inevitable anyway. It's inevitable anyway. You're not winning with 34-year-old James Harden looking like the tub of lard that he looked like in the last two playoffs. You're not winning with a, a a center as your number one option who can't stay healthy. You're not winning with this roster construction. Maybe maybe Daryl rebuilds the roster. Maybe the roster was actually better than it looked because Doc Rivers refuses to play anybody. It's inevitable. If James Harden leaves, Joel Embiid is going to request a trade. Now, speaking of the roster... I said last night, how many minutes would Gabe Vincent and Max Struess play under Doc Rivers? And the correct answers were about zero. Okay, here's why Doc Rivers being fired was the best thing that could have happened for the Sixers' future. Somebody like Eric Spolstra has balls as a coach. He puts winning... Above everything. They signed Duncan Robinson to a $90 million contract. And he didn't play a single minute in the series last year against the Sixers. Because he can't play defense. And Spolster knew he couldn't have Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson on the floor at the same time in the playoffs. He had the balls to bench a $90 million player. And won that series. This season, Tyler Hero breaks his hand. Duncan Robinson comes in. Looks just as good as he looked before he signed that $90 million contract. 
Kyle Lowry, the sign and trade from Toronto. 37 years old, looks pretty washed. He's coming off the bench. He came off the bench last night and played 17 minutes. Doc Rivers would have had this dude playing 40 minutes a game, starting, even if he's putting up goose eggs and has a minus 25. If he's on the big contract, if it was a big sign and trade, whatever it was, big name, he was going to be playing all day. Eric Spolstra puts winning above big names, contracts, and everything else like that. Eric Spolstra would have benched Tobias Harris a long time ago. He would have said, I don't care about a $180 million contract. I can't have him and P.J. Tucker on the floor at the same time. I don't know if I can have him and Joel Embiid on the floor at the same time. Eric Spolster wouldn't have played P.J. Tucker 37 minutes a game at 38 years old in the playoffs putting up goose eggs. You know what I mean? So I'm getting closer to this. Is it the roster or was it all Doc Rivers? You look at Isaiah Joe, when Dan Burke filled in, Isaiah Joe had two, an 18-point game and an 11-point game. Doc Rivers came back, you never saw him again. You know? Then you release him. Then you, they, Doc Rivers refuses to play Charles Bassey, who put up 12 points and 5 blocks against Nikola Jokic last November. Refused to play him, they release him. You know? Those are two role players that could be very good, because he went and signed a four-year contract with the San Antonio Spurs. Then you can look at DeAnthony Melton, Jaden Springer, who hasn't sniffed the NBA floor yet, Jalen McDaniels, Paul Reed, Daniel House Jr. All of these players are two-way athletic players that are on the Sixers roster that were not used by Doc Rivers. You got you to understand this, man. He sat there and played 38-year-old P.J. Tucker, Tobias Harris, George Niang. I mean, he played Montrez Harrell. He he played Furkan Korkmaz for four months a couple uh, last year. I'm not trying to sell you hope here because I think you need better stars than 34-year-old James Harden. But I do think there is hope moving forward that Daryl Morey put together a pretty decent roster with pretty decent young two-way players and Doc Rivers was sitting there refusing to play them. So... Maybe this upcoming season, the 76ers roster looks better, younger, faster, and everything with a coach who's going to use them. Doc Rivers was a major, 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 major issue, not just for right now, but for the Sixers' future moving forward. Again, the Miami Heat are playing undrafted players in the playoffs and are up 2-0 on the Boston Celtics. So I'm glad Doc is out of here. Maybe the roster's not as bad as we thought it was. We'll find out with a new coach and a new season. But at the end of the day, if James Harden leaves, I think Joel Embiid's requesting a trade anyway. That's it for today, man. Y'all have a good one.